The bare bones bug out bag. It's a concept that's been around for a while. Ever since the idea of having a large backpack filled with gear, there's been people who said, hey, what is the simplest route to get our needs met? How simple can you make the bug out bag? And in this video, I'm just going to kind of, in my opinion, talk about how far I would take it in terms of minimizing uh, the contents. And I'm going to do this in the context of warm weather environment, just so that this is even more simple. So let's jump right to it. Uh, the first category is going to be like shelter. And I'm going to say no uh, tent system, no sleeping bag or no sleeping pillows. Uh, you know, I, I'm shocked sometimes. And I think it's fine and everything for just going out for a recreational hiking. But there's a lot of people who have to have their camp pillow. It's, it's quite, you know, hilarious. Um, but yeah, none of that stuff. Uh, maybe a tarp or a, a poncho tarp or just give me a simple poncho would be it. Uh, a bivy sack to replace uh, the sleeping bag because in some locations, you know, it can be a little chilly or there could be rain out. And you want some protection. So they have these really, really small and lightweight bivy sacks. And some of them can give you as much as an extra 10 degrees of warmth by reflecting your body heat. Also, you have a parachute cord or bank line that you would probably want to use uh, to create a ridge line or do other tasks. Uh, a cutting tool, um, I would probably get away from, you know, all the jazz of a uh, folding shovel, folding saw, uh, hatchet axes and all that. Um, maybe even not even carry a fixed blade. And I know that for a lot of people, that's like heresy. You know, it's like, what are you talking about? It's so easy to carry like a more companion. And I would agree. It's very, very, you know, simple. But, um, you know, Swiss Army uh, has some stuff. You know, if, if you've been around the last like 50 plus years, you know, they have some stuff. And they have uh, sub two ounce, uh, you know, multi-tools that are pretty good. You know, in fact, really good. And so you can still have a cutting tool, but you have some other tools as well that with it. So just for me, I would carry probably a simple Swiss Army knife. Uh, some type of a container is next. And, you know, a canteen or a water bottle, just to kind of understand the limitations. Though, if it's not metal, you can't boil the water. Uh, and also just be aware of uh, the, the size of the opening. You know, I personally like the wide mouth containers so that you can fit a lot of the different um, uh, like filter straws. You know, water filter straws um, can fit in there and you can just basically filter the water right out of the container. And uh, that's just something that's important to me, you know. But if you plan on not bringing a water filter and you just want to boil your water each time you need water, uh, make sure it's metal, you know, that would be on the safe side. Uh, fire starters, you know, a means to make fire is really important. Uh, definitely maybe some lighters, uh, some ferro rods, things like that obviously. And I'd probably put it in some type of waterproof container. And while you're at it, maybe a few pieces of tinder. Um, the next is like uh, a map uh, of your area. So a local map and a regional map, uh, a compass, you know, if you really want to be a little more safe and have a little bit more of a confirmation of your, of your bearing, maybe a, a second compass. And, you know, I would put all this in a, in a map pouch, you know, that's watertight. Food and water, obviously, before you leave, you want to fill up your canteens or containers. Uh, that's a given. Uh, food, you know, I believe that if it's just an egress situation, like a bug out scenario, don't carry all this food that needs to be cooked. Uh, just bring a few things. You don't need a lot uh, just to give you some boosts, you know, some calories and a little nutrition, some ready to eat foods. Uh, a change of clothes, you know, if you're only going to egress uh, for a day or two, maybe three days at most, you can pretty much wear the same clothing. You're not going to die. Uh, but, you know, if you just want to make sure that you have dry clothes in case you get caught out in a storm, then it makes sense to have a change of clothing. And, and I say, you know, if there's any other piece of, uh, you know, clothing that you'd want to have more than just one, it could be socks. You know, maybe you'd want to have two or three pairs of socks uh, for obvious reasons. Um, 
you're light. You know, I think that a small, compact, long runtime uh, headlamp is just the way to go. If you're just going to pick one item, a headlamp. And, you know, I'd carry spare batteries or if it's rechargeable, have a small uh, battery bank available. First aid supplies. You know, a trauma kit would be ideal, but if you're going bare bones, maybe just like a, a small compact tourniquet and some uh, bandages put in a Ziploc bag or some other type of watertight container, uh, that's going to be at least uh, something. Uh, repair items, you know, maybe some type of like crazy glue or uh, Gorilla tape, some type of duct tape. I think those things are good and should be considered. Uh, signal devices, uh, whistles and signal mirrors are obviously something that a lot of people carry for good reason. Uh, our voice uh, does not travel as far as we think it does. It has lots of limitations. And so a whistle and a signal mirror are going to be better uh, for attracting attention longer distances. So just remember that. Uh, money, you know, don't forget to put some emergency cash in your bag. Um, it just depends on how much stuff costs in your area, but I'd say between like two to $400 as a starting point, uh, you may have to get a hotel room or a motel room. Uh, you may have to buy food or maybe you get stuck somewhere and you just have to deal with that situation. And so you may need to buy some provisions to kind of get through that period of time. The next is like a copy of uh, your ID and some other important papers, maybe insurance papers and so forth. And I put those papers in like a map pouch that's waterproof. Um, or if there's extra room in your actual map pouch that you have your real maps in, you could put it in there. Uh, spare keys. Uh, keys to your house, uh, keys to your vehicle, keys to your bug out location. You definitely need those. So keep an extra, you know, spare uh, set of those in your bag. And also uh, with uh, your important documents, you want to keep an emergency uh, contact list that has names, phone numbers, and addresses. <clears throat> and lastly, your bandana. You know, I think that I'd probably pick the bandana because it's just more compact and simple um, over a shemog, but either one works just fine. And there's so many uses for a bandana. And of course, all these items that I just listed are in, uh, you know, in addition to your everyday carry. So I'm, I'm assuming that you're going to have a cutting tool on your person, like a pocket knife. And maybe if you carry like a firearm, you're going to have that with you because it's part of your everyday carry. That you're going to have your wallet. You're going to have maybe a small flashlight, things like that. You know, things that uh, a prepper would typically have on their person. So uh, that's my bare bones, kind of like minimalist bug out bag for warm weather. Um, what do you think about this? Is this uh, simple enough? Did I go too far or did I not go far enough? Let me know in the comment section. Hey, thanks for checking the video out. You guys take care.